Hello, everybody. My name is meteorologist Hutch Johnson. We're talking about our risk of severe weather in the northern plains today. All modes of severe weather will be possible. And in fact, there's some spin in the atmosphere, meaning we cannot rule out tornadoes. The Storm Prediction Center has areas of risk. We're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about the modes of severe weather and the timing of when they may make their way into your area. And then we're going to have a look at the energy in these storms and where all the ingredients have the most likelihood of coming together and where coming up in this update. Hey, if you've never seen me before, I'm a meteorologist of 26 years with on-air experience here across the area. And I will tell you this, it's fun to continue to track weather for you on this mobile platform. So if you like what you see here, I'd love to have you hit the subscribe button on YouTube. And also, if you like the video, hit the like button as well. Let's get right to it. Taking a look at what we have going on with regards to the severe risk today from our friends at the Storm Prediction Center. Where you see the yellow areas here, this is a level two on a five level scale of severe weather. There'll be numerous severe thunderstorms in the yellow area possible, and we will have all modes of severe weather possible in these areas. So it includes most of Minnesota, Minnesota into northern Iowa. Now, where you see the orange, that is a level three on a five level scale. Not only will we have numerous strong to severe thunderstorms, but the potential for more damaging ones and even a few strong tornadoes exists in the area of orange. I'll show you where this is shifting. This does include Duluth and the North Shore. As we look down toward the Twin Cities, there's a chance near the Sandstone area. It does not work its way into the Minneapolis area. Thunder showers now in Brooklyn Park and Bloomington in the Twin Cities. You are in the slight risk area, meaning we'll see numerous thunderstorms as we go through the afternoon and evening that could become severe. And finally, this does include areas near Fargo and Grand Forks, but mainly on the Minnesota side of the river in North Dakota, the best chance of severe storms in the Slight risk category will be in the southeast corner of the state down there near Wapiton and Breckenridge. Now, you see the greens that surround all the yellow. This area is marginally severe. Storms will be firing in these areas and they could briefly become severe. We're not expecting widespread severe, but all the ingredients are still there in these locations. Now, with this, we're going to take a quick peek at some of the threats today with regards to severe weather per the Storm Prediction Center. And what we'll look at first is at risk of hail. Now, check this out. We're seeing a chance for some bazooka-sized hail, big hail. And where you see this red and the hatched area, any hatched area here from basically central and western Minnesota through Lakes Country, we're talking about Detroit Lakes through the Brainerd-Baxter area and Niswa on out to Duluth. The red area has an increased chance of significant hail over two and one half inches in diameter. Huge hail because of the heat and humidity in place. This 30% thing, what does that mean? Within about 25 miles of your location, you could see significant hail. Now, in the yellow hatched area, there is a significant risk of hail, and it's about a 15% chance that within 20 miles, 25 miles of your location, you could have severe hail potential. And not just one inch diameter hail, this could be really large hail because of the atmospheric parameters tonight. A 5% risk is in brown surrounding that. Other parameters that we're watching for tonight is the risk for, you guessed it, damaging wind. We'll go over the tornadoes here briefly and the risk of tornadoes, but let's check out that wind threat. Now, here's a look where we have in Duluth this red circle, and this is where we could have some extremely gusty straight line winds. Straight line winds in excess of 8080 miles per hour will be a possibility. Grand Rapids through the basically North Shore, Duluth Superior, Cloquet, on down to Moose Lake and Sandstone. Similar areas as we saw on other uh, concerns with regards to the hail. Now, let's check out the tornado threat from my friends at the Storm Prediction Center. There is spin in the atmosphere and it is actually pretty impressive. Stay with me. We're going to go over that because the latest models suggest that maybe we'll have some spin down to the south, but will storms form there? Always a question. Here is a look now. Where you see the brown area, the risk for tornadoes is 5%. Now, on any given day up here in the Northern Plains, we're less than a half of a percent for regards to tornado risk in our area. And in fact, it's much smaller than that. So keep in mind, there is a chance of tornadoes today if storms form in your area, you should stay informed of the developing storms. And I will be covering them live on my Facebook channel and right here on YouTube as well. So I will be a source for you as these storms make their way through. But make no mistake about it. Get the latest information that you can 
any way you can to find out if they're severe. In the green areas, which does include areas close to Fargo, uh, we're talking Lakes Country near Fergus Falls, Detroit Lakes. There's a 2% risk for tornadoes. They have this cutting off at the state line with North Dakota having lower risk for tornadoes, but I'll show you where my concern lies in that particular neck of the woods as well. So the severe risk is a Northern Plains event for today. Let's change direction now and look at the track and timing of this system. We're going to look at a couple of models here real quickly though. This is a rapidly updating model that updates hourly. And that means good things and bad things. Good things. Uh, it can latch on to something new that wasn't foreseen by the model earlier and carry that through. Bad things is it changes every hour sometimes. And the ability of any model to predict with consistency where thunderstorms are going to form because thunderstorms are tiny like a pencil spot on a big map. We just don't have that skill yet. So keep that in mind, but it does highlight the area of concern. So let's take a peek now with regards to the modeled forecast. And we're going to take a look at a high resolution model. I want to turn off the uh, severe risk area here so we can have a clear look at the latest models run with regards to these storms. Let's go to it right now. Let's see how much of this model has come in as we go into the afternoon hours. Now, uh, let's clear that off the screen for you and show you the loop. Now, showers and thunderstorms are going to form mainly moving out of Canada as we go through the afternoon and evening hours. I will slow this down so you can look at the timing in any given area. Notice, not everywhere in the risk area is going to see storms. Ongoing storms now as we go through the early afternoon in and around the Twin Cities. A couple of these storms might be severe, but the main event fires here. Look at this. Northeast North Dakota will see some of the first storms. They could briefly be severe, and I'll show you in a moment. There's a chance for some spin in this area as well. Now, we'll see a line of storms forming from not far from the boundary waters right into that Bemidji area. If we'll take you in a little closer, you could see uh, we're looking at northern portions of Beltrami County up near the Red Lakes area. So Clearwater County up north there, a chance at seeing some of these more stout storms. Hubbard County as well. Check this out now as we go through the time frame of 5 to 10 o'clock tonight. This is where the greater area will see some of these storms spread. Notice they don't get down into the Twin Cities, but here is this backward C-shape, a linear line blasting its way across Lake Superior. That's going to go across the North Shore, Duluth Superior, and into northern Wisconsin and the Apostle Islands area. So, Stay informed of weather. The northwest quadrant of Minnesota will continue to see showers and storms, but the severity and the risk thereof will decrease as we go toward the late night hours. So this is an early to mid-afternoon start, and the time frame carries it through about midnight, and then for the most part, it's out of here, heading into Wisconsin. But the risk of uh, Wisconsin severe storms, while not zero, is a lot lower than the area that we covered here moments ago. Now, there are a lot of parameters we can look at with regards to this very model. I'll show you one more model model here just to show you the consistency that we have. There's a little bit of difference here, but let's take you through that. This model, as it loads up, also an American model. It also updates fairly regularly, and it is a convection allowing model. It's showing that we'll have the initiation of storms in northeast North Dakota as well, and there is a risk for all modes of severe weather. Here we go as we cross into the early to mid-afternoon time frame. We're talking 2 to 4 p.m., so it's a little later onset on this model as opposed to the other. Notice here, Lakes Country, we're talking anywhere from Clearwater County near Bagley and the Bemidji area, Red Lakes area, on down into southeast North Dakota a risk for these storms to fire up in the early evening. These storms will quickly move off to the east such that by about 9 o'clock tonight, they're out of eastern parts of North Dakota, out of western Minnesota, and exclusively over the North Shore where the greatest risks are. There'll be a line on this model moving right into the metro area, the Minneapolis area. Uh, this is where storms could be very, very gusty and windy, and the threat for tornadoes will continue. But after about 10 o'clock, these blast into, look at this, southern Wisconsin as opposed to northern Wisconsin on the other model. So there are some differences. Keep that in mind. Now let's switch gears. We're going to, after now showing you the track and timing, let's talk about the tornado risk and some tools that we can use to look at that are right here. This is again, a rapidly uh, updating model. And this model guidance will share with us a look at some parameters within these storms. Let's get started. We'll take a look at what we have going on with regards to the latest model run here. We're going to look at severe weather threats and we're going to start with the tornado risk as promised. Okay, so here we can go and take a look at where the spin in the atmosphere is highest. And there's a 
parameter calculated by these models that calculates where the tornado ingredients are the greatest. We'll call it the tornado threat, okay? So as we step through time in this particular model run, uh, I'll, I'll interpret the time for you here, but as we go to 20Z, you subtract five hours for central daylight time. 20 minus five, that would be 15. This is three in the afternoon, moving toward the Twin Cities, some ongoing energy and spin in the atmosphere. Watch what happens as the main energy approaches as we go through the later afternoon and early evening hours. The risk for tornadoes is is what you're looking at here. This isn't radar. Where it's red, the risk is much higher for tornadoes. And look at this, it's in the Twin Cities. But neither model showed storms in the Twin Cities at this time. But there'll be some spin in the atmosphere nonetheless. So any storms that form in an environment with spin in it could quickly become, well, producers of tornadoes and large hail. However, we do have storms that both models showed moving through Lake Superior, Duluth, Cloquet, and look at this. It explodes as we go into 0Z. This is about 7 p.m. at night, and as we carry it through, look at the crazy spin in the atmosphere here. It's pink. That's very high. So as we go through the early evening hours between 5 and 9 p.m., that's when the risk for spin is the greatest. Remember I said something about Northeast North Dakota? A couple of the models showed them forming. There is some spin in the atmosphere up here as those storms storms first take hold. So I'll be watching those for you live, covering them here as we go through the early to mid-afternoon in the northern part of North Dakota and northwesternmost or the greater Minnesota area. All right, that's a look at the tornado threat. Now let's look at energy in the atmosphere because huge hail. You saw all the hatched areas. Huge hail is possible with these storms. We're going to look at the upward velocity that could initiate these. And we're going to look at the most unstable parts of the atmosphere as we go through time here this evening. Now, as you see, we have a couple of areas of concern with instability in the atmosphere. Think of instability as a fast rising hot air balloon. The more energy, in the atmosphere, the faster the hot air balloon rises. Where you see the reds, that's really energetic air that has a lot of upward movement potential. It doesn't mean it is moving. If we just give it a start, a trigger, these parcels of air could rise so rapidly they could support ginormous size hail. So we'll be watching for that tonight, but look at where this energy is. It's near the Twin Cities as we cross into the mid-evening hour and then quickly it does sweep all the way across into parts of Wisconsin. And look at this energy here near South Dakota. Most models didn't show a lot of Sioux Falls thunderstorm activity. Why? It's sizzling hot in the upper atmosphere and we call that a cap. Rising parcel of air as my head hits the cap and it sits back down. It can't blast through certain warm parcels of air aloft. So that's what we call a cap. We'll be watching for that. That's why all the ingredients don't always line up and mean severe weather. We've looked at tornadoes. We've looked at energy or lift in the atmosphere. Now let's look at something called bulk shear. Bulk shear in the upper levels of the atmosphere and throughout the atmosphere can allow storms to really have the energy they need to keep going at night and also for very large hail. I'm gonna show you where that shear is and where the energy is going to be the greatest for that. For that, I'm gonna look through a deep layer of the atmosphere, not a shallow layer, and we're gonna carry this over. I want you to watch the pink area out in Montana. This is the main event, spreading out of parts of Manitoba across the northern parts of Minnesota. And then here we go, look at this. This bulk shear here as we go through the late night hours will continue to sweep this system out of here. There is not a lot of bulk shear that's uh, associated with these storms that are first firing as we go into the early evening hours. This is a little bit later in the event. So behind it, we could have some pretty gusty winds, but at the same time, there is not the bulk shear tied to the storms at the same time that they're moving over. That's important to notice as well. So we do have a risk for huge hail tonight in these areas. We do have a risk for some very strong damaging straight line winds. And we showed you that in the form of the backwards C-shaped Boeing line segments of the storm. I will go back to that right now on this particular model here. So you could get a feel for where that is going to be once again. It's been a little while since I showed you this. So we'll top this off with a look at these backward C-shaping parcels moving through Duluth right here as we go through. See how they become backward C-shaped right here? Okay, those parcels could have some very gusty winds and then those bow off into the late night hours about midnight or so pushing into Northern Wisconsin. This is just one model and a 
there's not one model out there that is going to have this to a T perfectly timed and perfectly right where the thunderstorms form. But that said, we can prepare you. And that's what I'll do. I'll be live tonight on this channel. I'll be live tonight on my uh, Facebook channel as well. So I appreciate your uh, support in any way you can. Pass the word. Let people know in the Twin Cities in Duluth if you have friends there. Hutch will be watching the skies for you as we go through the evening tonight. Now let's take a quick look at the nation, shall we? We do have watches, warnings, and advisories across the nation. Let's go back up to my map here and we'll pop this up on the national view of the radar. The only concern for severe weather tonight of widespread nature is in the northern plains. The rest of the nation looks to be fairly quiet with regards to, well, what's going on in uh, in the radar aspect, but not heat. So let me turn on the watches, warnings, and advisories that we have now. And you're going to see a lot of pink and a lot of red across portions of the southwestern United States. We have heat warnings for the Phoenix and Tucson areas. And we do have heat advisories here where you see these pinkish or I guess peach colors here on Hutch's map in New Mexico. And look at this, Nevali in the uh, California area here, there is a heat advisory as well. So heat and storms. We do have some active advisories for storms moving into the Rochester area now, uh, not far from Mankato, making their way toward Albert Lee. These storms that are happening now are strong, but not severe. The main event will be coming a little bit later. Heat is the problem and the heat will continue across the north. Temperatures today in and around the Fargo area, by the way, fueling these storms with increasing amounts of humidity as well. We'll pop up a look at some of these current conditions here to show you that we have temperatures that are hitting 90 degrees in this area. And also we have dew points that are well into the 60s. That's very juicy air for this far north in the United States. So here we go. Let's take a look at the uh, the temperature and humidity. Now temperatures on Hutch's map here are plotted in red and the dew points are in green. Now when we have dew points that hit the 60s, that's very sweaty. Air you can wear. And we have dew points in southern and southwestern Minnesota in the 70s. This is air straight from the Gulf of Mexico, and it's made its all the way up into Watertown. It's made its way all the way up into the Lake Traverse area, where right now in Wheaton, we have a temperature of 90 and 61, the dew points. So dew points or moisture that fuels these thunderstorms is coming in on some pretty strong south winds, and that will increase as this wave makes its way through and increase the energy going into the storms and the updrafts going into those storms. So a lot of spin in the atmosphere, a lot of energy. What can stop the storms here is we got this pocket or bubble of very hot air down in and around the Sioux Falls area right now. Well, temperatures are cooled there, as a matter of fact, thanks to some thunderstorms right now over you in Sioux Falls. It's 70 degrees there up to the north Brookings, so 85 degrees. T uh, dew points are in the 60s. So the atmosphere in the upper levels a little bit warmer down to the south. So the risk of severe may be a little lower for you folks down in the Sioux Falls area as we go through the night tonight. Again, thanks for watching. I'm meteorologist Hutch Johnson. I appreciate all of your likes right here on Facebook. I appreciate it if you slam the like button as well on YouTube. And if you have a mind to and you want to see notifications, subscribe on YouTube now by pushing the subscribe button. And you can also hit the little bell on there to be notified when I am going live with updates that are important to you and your family. Have a wonderful evening. Things will be firing here fairly shortly, and I'll keep you up to date on Hutch's weather. Thanks for watching.